As you've been getting into bluebirds, you're probably becoming more aware of competition species. And some of the famous ones are your house sparrows, your European starlings, those are your invasive ones, and then your native ones, um, one of the big ones is the house wren. The thing is, all cavity nesting birds are competitors of each other because they're all competing for uh, the same resource. They all want a cavity nest. But the question may come to mind about whether or not chickadees are a threat too. Maybe you had a chickadee going into a bluebird box or maybe you have an active bluebird box and you've noticed a chickadee kind of poking its head in there and you're a little bit worried. So we're gonna talk about the threat level, um, how to manage the situation, just everything you need to know here. So we'll dive right into it. Let's just start off with whether or not chickadees are a threat to bluebirds. Um, in general, not really. Chickadees are seen as good neighbors to bluebirds, meaning if you have a bluebird box in your yard as well as a box for chickadees, things are generally gonna go well. They're not like a house sparrow where they are capable of unaliving an adult or baby bluebirds. Chickadees are very likely to lose a fight with a bluebird every time. They're just a lot smaller, they're not as aggressive. So in that respect, chickadees are not a threat to bluebirds. But occasionally chickadees have been reported this is very rare but it does happen every single year there's a report they've been reported to go into an active bluebird box peck the eggs and sometimes toss them out this is something that like it's only now becoming documented a little more because the nest box cameras are becoming so popular i don't want this video to ruin chickadees though these are really sweet birds that need our protection just as much as bluebirds do if not more. So this is not to villainize chickadees at all. This is more just to educate everyone about the fact that this can happen, but it doesn't happen often at all. Competition though can get tough for any wild bird. House friends are the ones who are more famous for doing this. And the reason house friends are more famous for doing this is because uh, the male will go and build dummy nests in whatever cavity he can find, multiple cavities. And then he finds his mate and his mate picks which one she likes best and then she finishes off the nest. The downside with this is house wrens need those cavities in order to build these dummy nests. They're building a lot of them and that means that they're going to go into active nest boxes sometimes. The reason this is happening more with house wrens is because of frequency. You know, they're building more nests so they're more likely to hit on an active nest. With chickadees, they're not known for building dummy nests, but they are known for sometimes abandoning a nest. Maybe something happened and now they need to go nest somewhere else. So that could be kind of what's prompting the situation is they lost their nest. There's nothing available. And so now they're going to get a little more aggressive, not severely aggressive, but a little more aggressive because nature is calling, you know, time is ticking. They've got babies to make. The other thing to keep in mind is that Every and any cavity nesting bird is capable of doing this. Nature is nature, competition is competition. There's not like a moral code that they get to follow. So it just, it does happen. And our job is to be stewards and try and keep the peace, but ultimately we're here to protect our native birds. So if this is something that has happened to you, first of all, I, I have not experienced this with chickadees. I know it's been reported but I've experienced this with house friends and I know that it's really heartbreaking. And it's also really easy to get angry too. Um, but we don't want this anger to lead to hate for a certain bird. Again, we wanna make sure that we're here as basically shepherds, you know, we just wanna tend to the nature in our backyard because by making that thrive, then the local ecosystem thrives and we're doing our part. So if this has happened, take a step back, grieve, be sad, you know, it, it is heartbreaking, it is a loss, it sucks, but then you want to protect the chickadees that might be now nesting in that box. And I know, again, that's hard because it's like, well, you just destroyed the bluebirds and I was so happy, um, but we do want to protect the chickadees. Chickadees only have one set of babies per year, so once they're done, they're done. There are things we can do to manage the peace. So first of all, if this did happen, one of the things you can do is just put another nest box up. The bluebirds are probably gonna look for another space and they'll probably look in your yard first. So get another nest box up, um, put a one and one eighth hole reducer, uh, one and one eighth inch hole reducer on the chickadee nest box. 
and you know that can help you know the situation the the bluebirds are very likely to try and nest again anyway so there is some hope in this situation um, the next thing is let's just talk prevention so this doesn't happen whether it's chickadee a house wren or any other cavity nesting bird how do we prevent evictions and egg breaking from happening in the first place and so i have a few best practices when it comes to this number one when once you have the first egg laid whether it's a bluebird or chickadee get a wren guard and a, a sparrow spooker put on the nest box the thing you want to do though is be really careful that and make sure that your your birds have accepted this or don't put it all up at once um, and then just make sure that they're going in and out of the nest box watch the nest box closely after you've added one of these guards there are ways to train them into it um, with chickadees it's a little tougher because they are more skittish so you want to be really really gentle really careful and like stay back as much as possible don't intervene too much don't let your worry get the best of you either if they're not liking it pull it off though um, and just you know cross your fingers um, with bluebirds same thing you put it up go in stages here do one and then the other um, and then just make sure that they accept it if it's been like an hour or two hours and the bluebirds are frustrated and they're not getting into the nest box take it down um, the next thing is when you are using those guards, uh, you, the birds can fledge with them on, or so I've heard, but I don't want to make it hard for the birds to fledge, especially with a wren guard. I want the babies to be able to see their surroundings. They need to know that they can jump off to cover nearby. So take everything off. The other reason we're going to do that is so that com competing birds don't get used to these things. So you take it off after they fledge. Once the next set is going and an egg is laid, you put everything back up again. The next thing, so outside of the guards, the next big best practice I have is always have a vacant box on your property. Once your guards, your sparrow spooker and your end guards, once those are on the active boxes, you have a vacant box with no guards, no nothing on it. And this can serve as a decoy box for house sparrows or a nesting box for a competing species. As far as spacing goes, I would recommend at the very least 30 feet, but you're gonna have to experiment with things. And maybe your yard doesn't permit 30 feet. You can experiment with a little bit less and just see how it goes. See if there's fighting, and if so, it's, it's probably not gonna work. If you have more space and at 30 feet there's fighting, space it out further. Also, if you have more space in your yard, start out with more space between nest boxes. Another thing too is block the line of sight if you can. So, you know, if there's a bush in between, if, if the house sits between the nest boxes, things like that are also going to help with reducing fighting and competition and things like that. Because what can happen is if they're too close together or they're really immediately in, in the line of sight, the bluebirds will start defending both nest boxes. And if the chickadees are trying to nest, well, they can't nest as peacefully. So finding ways to block the line of sight, that can really help. You could also experiment with different heights. I had a tree where a chickadee nested like 30 feet up in the tree and then downy woodpeckers nested 15 feet below that. Um, I don't recommend a 30 foot pole. I don't think that's really possible, you know, but what I'm saying is if space is limited, you could have your bluebird box at about six feet off the ground and your chickadee nest box at 10 or 15 feet and maybe they're spaced 25 feet apart. And maybe, just maybe, that'll help. The downside with experimenting with height is that uh, you gotta get on some kind of ladder if you're doing that or find like a, I think it's a telescoping pole, you know, where you can raise and lower it. Um, so those are some drawbacks there. Start with spacing, you should be good. The last thing I wanna talk about is reporting. This is really important to show us what's going on. And so on the Nest Hollow site, I'll have the link in the description, but there is a place where if you've observed a chickadee invading a bluebird nest box or a chickadee invading another chickadee box or whatever it is, um, you can report that and there's a way to upload some footage. And if you wanna scroll, there's, there's also a page where I, I have kept records. Thankfully, people have contributed their reports and their footage. And so each year I try to update it. So far as of making this video, I haven't had any reports, but I'm also making this on March 14th and this will probably be published a lot later than that. So by then there could be some reports here. Um, in the end, remember, we are here to protect our native cavity birds. We're here to build habitat in our yard and just help restore some ecosystem. 
So this can be really hard. This can be really tough. Overall, chickadees are not a huge threat to bluebirds and there are ways we can manage the peace between all of the native species in our yard. Hey, just really quick, I wanna take a moment and pin this to the video in order to, yes, plug this educational coloring book. I have spent a year working on doing the illustrations, writing up all the information, but this book is all about caring for and hosting bluebirds, and it's pretty comprehensive too. I've set it up so you can color on one page and read about the topic on the other page. And the hope with this is that you could just relax, color, enjoy it, and then engage with the information too. You can find it on Amazon, and I'll also have a link to it in this video's description.